This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote. Today's quote is, Ballet is a dance executed by the human soul. And that is from Alexander Pushkin. With us today in the studio, we have someone who had the Ballet Nova Center and has been there for six years. Her name is Caroline Warren. Hello, Caroline. Hello, how are you, Basile? Good how you? Pleasure to be here. Thank okay. you so much for asking us. Okay, my pleasure. Yeah. So tell us about uh, your Ballet Center. Well, ballet, what is the full name of it to begin with? The full name is Ballet Nova Center for Dance. Okay. And we used to be known as Arlington Center for Dance and the Center Dance Company because we were based on Wilson Boulevard in Arlington, Virginia. Okay. And then in 2007, uh, we lost our lease and couldn't find any appropriate places in Arlington. So we ended up in our current location, which is wonderful, in uh, Falls Church. Virginia, Bailey's Crossroads area, and we okay. have 20,800 square feet of uh, beautiful studios, six studios, and uh, the last, the largest studio we're making into a black box theater for dance. So um, we were very happy to, to make that move. But we've been in business since 1981, as, not, as run by Kathy and Kenneth Fredgren. Um, as Arlington Center for Dance. So we have quite a good reputation in the Northern Virginia area mm -hmm. as a, a quality place, a center for dance excellence, mm -hmm. a great place to learn how to dance, whether you're three years old or you're 83 years old. Okay. So basically you have all ages. Which age do you have the most coming to your center? It's, it's hard to say. I think probably the younger ones, we have about 550 adult students and then probably about 800 children of a variety of different ages and uh, focuses. We have an enrichment program for students who want just to study dance once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, our pre-professional program, which is for kids who are much more focused and serious about their dance training. And well, they, I mean, um, much more focused and serious. We have the junior division, which mm -hmm. is uh, ages eight through about 12 or 13 mm -hmm. and then the senior division and conservatory division which are the more senior dancers mostly in high school mm -hmm. and they will come from 14 to 16 hours a week for classes oh, really? and then when there's a rehears rehearsals and performances they might rehearse another eight to ten hours more a week so it's a very intensive program and uh, most of these kids are very serious about their dance training we have a, a ballet core but they do study modern dance and jazz and conditioning and hip-hop and that kind of stuff as well but um, so some you study them, that at your center or uh, where they, are? they study everything everything with us we offer okay. We offer ballet, jazz, tap, hip hop, uh, so, conditioning, okay. everything. All right, so let me clarify. So you do more than just, let yes. me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What is ballet dance as what opposed to everything dance? else? That's Maybe a, that's the question I should ask. That's a really good question. Ballet yeah. dance is classical dance. It was originated in the court of Louis XIV mm -hmm. in the late uh, 15th century, mm -hmm. and he actually codified dance, he did. new moves. So that's why all ballet uh, movements and steps are in French because it started in France um, and then developed all over the world. So, so the ballet technique is, is very specific. There are names for different steps. Uh, there are names for combinations of steps. Um, there are different sorts of ballet techniques. There's the Russian, which is Vaganova, 
Bournemville, which is a Danish, Chiquetti, which is Italian, um, and the, you know, so there's a couple of, of different varieties. Uh, Royal Academy of Dance, which is British, but they're all based on, on the same kind of uh, curriculum. I guess that's what the name is, ballet, which is a French name. That's correct. Uh -huh. Ballet, ballon, ballon means to jump. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. that's how it evolved to ballet. Mm, interesting. So when you go into then modern dance evolved uh, sort of the turn of the last century mm -hmm. in it was a rebellion against ballet. So mm -hmm. these people started dancing without shoes on, with their hair loose, with um, costumes that were very free as opposed to tutus that were very you know strict mm -hmm. and uh, the movements they were playing with balance being on balance and off balance and all kinds of all kinds of things and that developed into a whole movement um, as well and now ballet companies use elements of modern dance as well as more contemporary Classic. things like jazz or hip hop or you know, that sort of thing that sort of crept way, crept its way into choreography gotcha so basically, ballet now yes, we started as a specific style and mm -hmm. is evolving. Is that what you're saying? It's always evolving. Yes. Uh huh. And taking all the modern elements. Yeah, I think that the technique hasn't evolved that much, but the choreography has. If you look at what is at the difference between the tech? What do you mean? The technique are learning the steps, like plies when you bend your okay. knees mm -hmm. and tendus, you start stretching your feet, and mm -hmm. there's a whole. Um, curriculum of mm -hmm. steps that you do within a ballet class. Mm -hmm. But choreography is what you see on stage. That's, it's like a composer who composes music using notes. So the ballet technique is like the notes and the choreography is like the composition. Oh, I gotcha, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so a choreographer can do, just be very classical in what, they, in the, what they do or they can bring in elements from all kinds of stuff. Um, one of the shows we have this spring is including pieces from an Ar Argentinian tango. So the choreographer is using the tango combined with ballet technique to produce something that's completely new and original. It's going to be fun. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. That's very, very interesting. So how did you happen to get involved yourself in this? In, in ballet? Mm -hmm. Well, I studied ballet when I was little. And I was very serious about it. I became a professional dancer. Let me ask you this question, yes. Mm -hmm. You use that word a lot, serious. Yes. What does that mean, exactly? Serious would be a teenager who goes to school all day, uh, comes home, or sometimes doesn't come home, changes into their ballet clothes, mm -hmm. leotards, tights, shoes, comes to ballet class, spends about three hours in, in class at the studio, comes home, does their homework, goes to sleep and the next day does the whole thing again. And they work very, very hard trying to perfect their technique. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's a little less serious may want to take ballet because they do ice skating or gymnastics or they're in their theatrical productions at school mm -hmm. or maybe they're doing basketball and they need to work on their, their stretch or their bounce. Um, so they might come once a week, okay. take a ballet class, and they might come once a week, take a jazz class. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. They're just, it, the approach is a little bit more recreational. They put in more time, the series put more time. Put in a lot more time, okay. right? Okay. With the goal to, some of them do want to be professional dancers. Some of our pre-professional program dancers are trying, are, are using that as their goal. And I would think that that's the reason. If you do it daily, yeah. put in three hours, yeah, there okay. got to be an end goal to that. I mean, unless you have a, a passion, a love for it, that right. just for the love of it, but. Uh, uh, I think there's a combination of, of both. Some okay. people are dancing, uh, we have one girl who is graduating this year who has been a dancer with us for well, she, since, for about 10 years, 10 or 11 years, oh, really? since she was little. And a um, very old is nice she dancer. Now? She is 18, mm -hmm. oh. and she's graduating high school this year, and she's not going to be a professional dancer. She's pursuing a career in design. So she's going to the Rhode Island uh, Institute of Design, which is a wonderful uh, design school. But even though she's not pursuing her dance career professionally, um, the experience that she's had, uh, learning discipline, learning mm. time management, learning how to work as a team, uh, learning how to get over stage fright, learning how to perform in front of people. These are all life skills that we mm. believe that we teach our students. Uh, so whether or not they become dancers professionally, okay. they, still, they still get a lot from, from our program. Mm -hmm. And we hope that the adults do as well, the adult dancers who 
you know, aren't pursuing the career, a, a professional career, but they might be sitting at a desk all day. They may be attorneys. They may be in a cubicle somewhere. And at the end of the day, they get to come to Ballet Nova and, and express themselves artistically and physically and dance to the music and make wonderful friends and get to know the teachers. And so it's, um, it's, it's not what it used to be. Ballet has really changed as, as a, a vehicle for different things in different people's lives. Mm -hmm. So we try to help everybody pursue whatever their dreams are um, through our dance classes. And I understand you dance yourself. I used to dance. I'm, I'm retired many years. <laughs> I don't remember approving that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move, right? <laughs> no, I started out as a professional dancer. I studied at the Pennsylvania Ballet and the Joffrey Ballet, so my, my training is very classical. Mm -hmm. um, but I always wanted to choreograph, so I ended up going to New York City and spending a couple of years there, mm -hmm. uh, struggling dancer thing. Mm -hmm. um, I never had the really great dancer's body, long, slim mm -hmm. legs, and um, so I wasn't, nobody was, nobody was knocking on my door trying to hire me, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but I loved choreography, so I did some of that in New York while mm -hmm. I was studying at Joffrey, mm -hmm. and then decided I wanted to do more of it, mm -hmm. and then a friend of mine said, well, you should go to college because you can do all that in college. Mm. So I did. I went to Skidmore College, and uh, while I was there pursuing a degree in dance, I met uh, the director of a company in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So after I graduated Skidmore, I went down and danced with that company for several years. Wow. And then after a few years, they started to need some help in the office mm -hmm. and asked me, because I had a college degree, if I wanted to mm -hmm. come and help. So I said, sure. And then three months later, I was the administrative director of the company. And while I was dancing and teaching and choreographing, I was also learning about arts administration. So um, my, my career kind of morphed a little bit. And then once I turned 30, I decided it was time to get more serious about my life and uh, moved back here to the Northeast, being from Philadelphia. I moved to Washington and then started a career in arts administration, working for the Corcoran Gallery, the Fairfax Symphony, eventually moving into association work uh, while I was also teaching and choreographing and started teaching for Arlington Center for Dance and met up with an old colleague of mine from New Orleans, uh, Nancy Woods, mm -hmm. who had become artistic director in 2002. And so we decided to choreograph the Nutcracker together. We did the full length together mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago. And uh, a few years ago when the organization moved to the new facility, and decided they, they really needed an executive director on top of you know, the, the very small administrative staff they had because of uh, the large studio space that had to be filled with dancers and teachers and we had to raise a lot of money because the rent was very expensive. Mm -hmm. So they chose to um, add on an executive director position and I was very, very pleased and honored that they hired me to do that. So I was able to really combine both my love of dance and my background at that point, which was in nonprofit management, marketing, uh, public relations, that sort of thing. So uh, I feel very, very lucky. It's a great organization. I love working with Nancy Woods. She's a true artist, a fabulous mm -hmm. teacher, a wonderful choreographer, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're we're quite the team. Oh, so what is the mission statement then of your uh, of Balenova? Our mission is to develop and nurture dancers in a uh, an atmosphere of respect as well as challenge so that the dancers know that they're not going to be beaten up verbally or physically which you know some of the Russian schools they have those sticks <laughs> that they use but we don't do that um, we, and we try to look at the whole person again some of these dancers the the kids that we're training may or may not go on to professional careers, but we want them to come out of the experience with a lot of positivity and a lot of, uh, a, a lot of good feelings about the experience. So, mm. so, but we also do a lot of outreach into the community. We, we provide free dance classes. We do open houses for the community where anybody can come in and take a, a mini class for half an hour and check it out, see if they like it. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of programs with the Girl Scouts, and we do some- How so? Uh, we have, before our performances, both the Nutcracker and our spring performance, we do a special Girl Scout education program where we teach them some things that they need to uh, achieve some of their dance patches. Like in oh. the Nutcracker, they'll get to learn about props and plots and 
um, they get to see the dancers, they get to look at the costumes, they hear about the story. Um, in our spring show, we have them, we have dancers come out with point shoes, which is when you dance on your toes, mm -hmm. and the dancers will explain the shoes to the children and put them on and dan you know, go up on the toe and answer any questions that the kids have. Uh, so it's actually a lot of fun. It's a lot okay. of fun. Yeah. Interesting. So now tell me, what is that uh, you need as an organization? Uh, why is Ballet Nova unique? What, what do you need? What do you oh, what do we need? Mm -hmm. We need money. Mm -hmm. We need money. We're doing a lot of things that are terrific, mm -hmm. um, but our overhead is extraordinarily expensive for 20,800 square feet in mm -hmm. uh, Falls Church. And we also have a very large scholarship and financial aid program. We give away about forty-eight, fifty thousand dollars a year in tuition assistance uh, to, to the students who take classes at your to place. To the students who take classes at our place, yeah. We we feel like if there's somebody who really, really wants to dance mm -hmm. and can't afford it, they should they should be able to dance. So. Um, we look for, for, for kids and young people who are very serious and committed, mm -hmm. whether or not they come once a week or come 12 times a week. You know, if they're committed and serious about working hard mm -hmm. and learning how to dance mm -hmm. and they need some money, um, we, we help them out. We help them out. And some of them have gone on to some very nice careers and some of them have gone on to college and you know, different things. But it's part of our mission to bring dance to the community. Mm -hmm. So, I got you. Okay. We're also building uh, building out our, our largest studio I mentioned before into a black box theater for dance. What does that mean, black box theater? A black box theater, in theater terms, is a small, intimate theater. It's all painted black mm -hmm. because when you have lights, if you have color, it bounces off. Mm -hmm. So in a theater, it's all black walls, mm -hmm. and it's a box, literally a box with a small area for seating, mm -hmm. and then an area for performance. Mm -hmm. But in Northern Virginia, there's not a great small theater for dance. You, the small theaters that we have, like the Artisphere or um, Synec Theater or Theater on the Run, they're too small. The stage is not big enough. Gotcha. Uh, and also the floor is very hard. Mm -hmm. In our studio, we actually raise the floors. They're called sprung floors. Mm -hmm. So they're up above the bottom uh, by several inches. Mm -hmm. So when you jump on them, mm -hmm. You don't, it's, it's not the impact, it's not that hard. Right, yeah. right. So that's very important to dancers, sure. as you can well imagine. Mm -hmm. um, so over the years, we've been raising money to put in the dance floor, to put in the overlay that, so it's not slippery, mm -hmm. to put in risers and chairs, and now we're finishing it with a big campaign to raise money for the theatrical lights and curtains. Okay. And once that's up, we're mm -hmm. going to have a, a theater space that's available to the community. Um, we're going to try to keep our rates really low. Mm -hmm. But um, it's going to be wonderful because right now small dance troops don't have any place to really perform. They either have to spend too much money or they end up performing in spaces like art galleries or churches or you know malls where there's, it's not really ideal for dance. Okay. So, uh, so we're very excited about raising that last bit of money for, for the space and then being able to perform more for our dancers and teachers and, and choreographers. So it's, it's a very exciting time for Ballet Nova. Okay, good. Very yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah. Last week you had the opportunity to attend a breakfast club event. I did. I was wonderful. Can you tell the audience, yeah, share with the audience your experience on it? Well, it was terrific. I, I was just telling you, I thought it was, I've been to a lot of, of networking events through mm -hmm. the, we're members of the Fairfax Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and the Falls Church Cham Chamber of Commerce, and mm -hmm. so I, I go to a lot of them. And I thought the breakfast club was particularly unique because it was so well organized mm -hmm. and it was, uh, organized with the clear goal mm -hmm. that everybody meets each other mm -hmm. and really networks. Mm -hmm. And I thought the one-to-one, -one, when you sat the newbies down mm -hmm. against the wall and had um, the people who had been there a few times basically like speed dating go across the room and everybody got to meet everybody else, I thought that was terrific. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy to talk to people. People were very, very friendly. Mm -hmm. And I met some very interesting people and who I think are possibly interested in helping us at Ballet Nova, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to the next one. Yeah. And also your big expo yeah, yeah. in June. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was terrific. Some networking events, you're kind of left on your own to figure out mm -hmm. you know, how are you going to meet these people. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the Breakfast Club was, uh, was just beautifully designed, so I really enjoyed it. OK, good. Well, looking forward to having you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
That's great. Yeah. So now, so what is the goal? So the goal, so you have all this building. In terms of how many students, do you have a goal and how many students to, to have in your organization? Well, yes and no. We have about 1,400 students right now. Mm -hmm. um, there are some areas that we can grow mm -hmm. and some areas that we can't. We limit the size of some of our classes sure. for the pre-professional program because mm -hmm. we don't want more than well, you 12 care for people. Them. Not yes. Yes, care for them. Exactly. Not just a matter of packing them in there. <laughs> exactly, because that's not what we're about. You know? and, and we're, we don't do these big recitals that some schools do at the end of the year because we think it's just kind of just a money making mm -hmm. thing and, and we're we do a, a performance for the for the parents at the end of the year mm -hmm. but the dancers just wear leotards and tights and pretty skirts and mm -hmm. so the parents get to see their dancers but mm -hmm. um, in some schools the each recital costume might cost a hundred dollars and they may do oh, really? three or four or five numbers in a recital and it takes four or five hours and we're, we're more into the quality <laughs> than, than the quantity mm -hmm. so you mentioned that you also want to do business event for the community. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you tell, tell us a bit about that? I'd be happy to. Okay. We have a new group uh, called the On Point Leadership Circle, mm -hmm. and it is geared towards the business community as a networking venue. Mm -hmm. So uh, business, again, similar to what you're doing, but mm -hmm. with a, a little, couple little, a well, little, 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 bit, little bit different. Mm -hmm. We did a show. You went to our fir very first one That's that right. we did in January. Mm -hmm. It's sponsored by our development committee, mm -hmm. and uh, the format is doing a little bit of networking for about half an hour. Mm -hmm with uh, other business leaders in the community who mm -hmm. come via um, friends of our board of directors, friends of our development committee, uh, some of our adult dancers who work in all kinds of different industries, mm -hmm. and they get to know each other. And then they go into our theater space mm -hmm. for a very short 30-minute performance, okay. which is very quick. It's mm -hmm. not just like you're not sitting there for half an hour mm -hmm. just watching one thing. We have five or six different dances that are that that we present some of them are our dancers some of them are local community dancers like gin dance or um, dance ethos performed at the one that you saw as well mm -hmm. as long as well as the ballet nova dancers okay. and then afterwards you do more networking um, have a little something to eat mm -hmm. and um, it was actually interesting to see what happened because at the end of the post performance networking mm -hmm. uh, people had something to talk about. You know, mm -hmm. it's like when you go on a first date mm -hmm. and you go to the movies mm -hmm. and then you're sitting there at dinner mm -hmm. and you have something to talk about. If you just go out to dinner, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> so, so on point leadership events are kind of helping people network and then there's something very interesting to talk about. What did you think about the dancers that you saw? What did you like? What didn't you like? Mm -hmm. um, did anything make you have a certain emotion. Mm -hmm. um, you saw one where there was a girl trying to get out of a picture frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something you don't see every day. <laughs> so why was she trying to get out of the picture frame? Were you wishing she would get out of the picture <laughs> frame? <laughs> I mean, so there was lots of, so it encourages a lot of information, a lot of interesting conversation mm -hmm. that um, perhaps you wouldn't be talking about at a Chamber of Commerce event. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get to know people in a different way and, uh, and it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Mm. So we're hoping to do probably about three or four of them a year. Okay. Um, but you can join the On Point Leadership Circle and you get a lot of uh, advertising benefits, online advertising on Facebook, on our website, on our email blast. So. Um, we're trying to engage the community mm -hmm. by using Ballet Nova as a vehicle for networking and okay. something a little bit a little bit different. Okay, very good. So, awesome. Yeah. Right. Here, I just want to remind the audience that we have definitely the monthly breakfast event you mentioned. Mm -hmm. The next one coming in on uh, May the 15th, and we have them each and every month. But in June, we have our big expo, and that will be on June 20 at the Stacy Community Center right here in Fairfax with 100 exhibitors and we're expecting four to 500 business people. Mm -hmm. You are definitely welcome. You can find more information on our expo on our website, which is right there, ultbizexpo.com. And uh, for more information on breakfast event, that will be blnbc.com. Any last information, Caroline, would like to share with the audience? Sure, I would like to invite people to, to check out our website, mm -hmm. which is uh, ballenova.org, mm -hmm. B-A-L-L-E-T-N-O-V-A.org. Mm -hmm. And that's got all the information on our classes, on performances, on outreach, on special events, uh, and that sort of thing. And I invite everybody to come see us perform and 
uh, come to our open house and, and come to the studio for a tour. It's really, really fabulous. And I thank you so much for having me today. Well, my pleasure. Definitely. It's so pleasure having you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so folks, you have it. Uh, Caroline herself, director of Ballet Nova. Now we all know what ballet is and we know where it's come from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. And hopefully we'll get you in to take a class. Uh, that's another story, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a one o'clock class on Sunday afternoons. It's yoga stretch. Anybody okay. can take it. Okay. We'll see you there next week. I'll start there then. Okay. Thank you very much for tuning in. Looking forward to having you again. Again, as always, have a very productive day. And if you want more information on our show, you can find it on our website, blnbc.com. Thank you very much and looking forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, again, have a very productive day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well.